And folks, I've been saying all along on this channel, to defeat inflation, you gotta defeat the aggregate demand in the economy. Absent of that, every time prices go down, the consumer will pick it up again. And we will see the inflation prices rebounding. If it's me, Diane, and John, we're all looking to buy this washing machine, but it's too expensive right now. And we all agree that we have to wait till prices go down. And the price goes down by 80 bucks. We look around and say, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. Let the price go down further. Then the price goes down by a hundred bucks. We keep saying the same. Hold it out. Prices will go down further. Then all of a sudden, Diane says, I'm not going to wait. I think a discount of a hundred bucks is good enough for me. I'm going to go ahead and buy this washing machine. All of a sudden, me and John are scrambling and saying, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> we want to buy the washing machine too. And here we go again. We start a bidding war and prices go higher. That is just basic human psychology. How do you break the cycle? The answer is if one of us, either me, John, or Diane, loses our jobs. Then we start thinking about, okay, 100 bucks down, but I'm more worried about whether I have a cushion in case I lose my job too. And folks, we know that inflation was born not due to low unemployment. Instead, it was born because of the reckless monetary policy by the Federal Reserve when they unleashed the tsunami of liquidity, the largest tsunami of liquidity in the history of mankind. In a single year, 2020, that was exactly the root of inflation. And of course, the uh, spend like a drunken sailor fiscal policy, that's not going to help either. So now we got inflation. And when you have inflation as a result of a stimulative policy of printing money out of thin air, throwing cash all over the place, you're going to stimulate demand in the economy. Some would argue hyper demand that the economy cannot really handle. And that causes more and more and more inflation. But when you have inflation due to a stimulative policy, which means an increase in demand, as a company, as an employer, and you have all of these goods that you have to offer, all of a sudden demand is surging higher, you gotta produce more. You gotta serve more. So what do you do? You gotta hire folks. And when all of these companies are doing the same and they're hoarding employees, we have a low unemployment rate in the economy. And as we start running out of employees and the competition heats up, we have a wage spiral. Wages continue to rise higher and higher and higher. And that fuels the aggregate demand in the economy. That if prices go down by a little bit, folks still have jobs, their wages are moving higher, their credit cards are still available. So prices go down, it's not a surprise that we see aggregate demand kicking in and inflation rebounding higher. And to kill the cycle of inflation, you gotta kill aggregate demand. Well, how do you do that? Unfortunately, and historically speaking, the only way we know how to kill the aggregate demand in the economy is by raising the rate of unemployment. Not only that kills the aggregate demand tangibly, but it also kills the inflation psychology. And I showed you the chart before. Every single time, every single time inflation went down, it went down due to the rise in the unemployment rate. But this time around, we have this delusional thinking that somehow we're going to get inflation down without raising the unemployment rate higher. And hence, we have a soft landing. Maybe that will be the case. I don't know, but it never happened before when we have a similar inflation episode. Major inflation episodes are resolved by a recession and a rise in the unemployment rate. Otherwise, inflation will rebound and continue to move higher and higher and higher. We've seen that exactly happening in the 1970s. And look at what we got today. The headline reads, Home buyer mortgage demand jumps after interest rates drop to two-month low. So prices go down, interest rates go down for a little bit. Everybody assumes that the Fed jobs is over and inflation is done. But here comes the aggregate demand. If the price on the home I'm eyeing for a while goes down, I'm going to jump in and buy it. If the mortgage in that house goes down, it's a more attractive buy right now than two months ago. I still have my job. I still have my saving, I still have my budget that I was planning to buy the house with, and now the price went down. It's a better buy than two months ago. And I don't know, it seems that inflation keeps going higher and rates continue to go higher. Maybe this is a good buying opportunity. Maybe rates will go higher if I wait. Maybe prices will rebound if I wait. I better buy this home right now. This is the inflationary psychology, folks. And it's not broken yet. Look at the New York Fed survey, for example. The one-year and the three-year-ahead inflation expectations among consumers actually rebounded higher again. So it is absolutely delusional by the stock market to expect and anticipate rate cuts by the Fed. The inflation process is still here, and the fight against inflation is not over yet. And it appears that even the Fed is now succumbing to reality. That in order to defeat inflation properly, they have to induce a recession in the economy. And they have to hold their noses and watch these financial disasters. It's not going to be the last bank, SVB, that will blow up. 
we will see more of them. We will see more companies, all of these zombie companies. They're going to go bust. We might even hit a problem with commercial real estate, residential real estate, and even airlines, companies that are bloated with debt in their balance sheets. But today we got American Airlines, for example, warning that consumer demand is actually moving down. And the Fed now admitted. Neil Kashkari says that a recession is possible, but high inflation would be worse. And today the Fed staff in the minutes also revealed that their case, their base case is for a what they describe as a mild recession. That's another stupid buzzword, mild recession, soft recession. Next thing you know, they might describe the upcoming nuclear war as a mild nuclear annihilation. Rest assured, it's not going to be that bad. You might die, but who cares? And even the IMF warns that a hard landing within the realm of possibilities for the US economy. And the question remains, when will the stock market succumb to the same reality that the Fed, and it appears to be the IMF, are succumbing to right now? That to resolve inflation, we have to get a recession, which will come with higher unemployment, which will come with more banks blowing up, which will come with a lot of zombie companies going out of business. And you put it all together, is this really good for the stock market? Is it really smart to buy equities right now, the most overvalued, by the way? As we head to this disastrous scenario of a recession, higher unemployment, zombie companies blowing up, more banks blowing up, I don't know, maybe it is a generational buying opportunity, but I'd rather not be stupid.